This video has been sponsored by EveryPlate. It's been a while since we dangerously beefed up our blood sugar levels here on the channel, so today we are making up for all that lost time and seeing who has the best coffee cake recipe on the internet. For the record, I absolutely love coffee cake and basically everything containing any type of coffee. It's the reason I love pumpkin spice latte so much. And based on some of these recipes, we can't really get much more seasonal than this. I am very excited today, so let's get right into this one. On the lineup today is by far the most requested coffee cake recipe. It's Claire Saffitz's double coffee cake. But then we've got two newcomers to the channel. We're gonna be trying Emeril Lagasse's apple and brown sugar coffee cake, as well as M. Patisserie's mega viral chocolate coffee cake. But before I can dive into any of these recipes, I gotta give a shout out to today's sponsor, Every Plate. I'm sure by now you guys have heard me talk about how much I love Every Plate. They have become one of the best friends of the channel, but if you are somehow still unfamiliar, allow me to introduce you to the best, most cost-effective meal kit around. At an average of 25% cheaper than grocery shopping, Every Plate is the perfect alternative for your weekday family meals. They send you quality ingredients that come pre-portioned to save you time and money and to help prevent food waste. Kind of like that moldy fruit or that half bag of spinach that you throw out at the end of every single week. Especially as our schedules get a little bit busier this time of the year, set yourself up for success with Every Plate, the perfect time and money saving hack. Without question, my favorite part of Every Plate are their constantly changing meals and your ability to customize each meal to your liking. Choose between 18 different recipes that change every single week. You can swap proteins or sides to your preference. Plain and simple, this is a cheaper and more delicious meal kit option that you can never get bored of. So peeps, please do yourselves a favor by clicking the link in the top line of the description, going to everyplate.com, make sure to use my code CMORE149, and you will get your first box of Every Plate for just $1.49 per meal. And as always, thank Thanks so much to every plate for supporting the channel. But back to business. We are first gonna start with Emeril Lagasse's apple brown sugar coffee cake. I compiled some flour and cinnamon, baking soda, sour cream, and salt, some light brown sugar and vanilla extract, some water, a couple of apples, eggs, and butter. First of all, shout out to the absolute legend that is Emeril Lagasse. I have so many fond memories of watching him on TV growing up with my grandma especially. Now that I think about it actually, he might have been my first ever exposure to food entertainment. Either him or Iron Chef. Either way, shout outs to him. But for this cake, this appears to be a very simple and super seasonal recipe. I love the apples, the cinnamon and brown sugar in there. Basically everything gets dumped right down into your stand mixer. Just make sure those butter and sugars are beautiful beautifully creamed. I sifted in the dry stuff, dumped in the wet stuff, and then of course started dicing up my apples. Even though we can all agree that the apple pies and crisps of the world are delicious always, maybe if you get sick of that and you want to use up some more apples, I think this will be a good opportunity. You also have to whip together the crumb topping, which is a very simple combination of the sugar, flour, cinnamon, and butter, just until this is looking like a wet, clumpy sand. Sprinkle that over the top and then bake it off in a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. Now, this next aside might sound quite stupid to some of you, but don't judge. I had quite the revelation when I was baking this and realized that there's no actual coffee in this in any form. And then, upon further research, I discovered that a large swath of coffee cakes out there do not actually contain coffee, they're just a cake that happened to be eaten alongside a coffee sometimes. Please just tell me I'm not the only one that felt like an idiot when discovering that. Uh, and if you are, don't worry because the next few recipes do in fact contain coffee. But regardless, this thing was looking delicious by the end, especially when I got that glaze poured over the top and I cut myself a piece. So let's give coffee-less cake number one a try. First impressions, it smells incredible. I get that cinnamon and brown sugar so clearly. It looks maybe a touch dry, besides the glaze, of course. That looks awesome, but overall, very promising. Mmm. I have never eaten my own words faster in my life. This is not dry at all. This is delicious. I love the texture of the apples. There's the tiniest bit of firmness in the middle, but mostly super soft and perfect. I love this topping. I was uh, scared it was gonna be a little bit too sweet. It is not, it is balanced awesomely. Obviously, it screams fall too because of the spices and the apple in there. The only one knock I can come up with is that I'm missing the coffee. Maybe prior to me finding this out today, I would have eaten this and not thought twice about it, but I swear, coffee cake always tastes like coffee to me. And this one, although delicious, is obviously missing that, so it's gotta be docked a couple points, but overall, so damn good. 
all the recommendations in the world to remake this one. Next up, we've got one of the all-time legends of the channel. It's Claire Saffitz and her coffee coffee cake. For this, you will need some granulated sugar and cinnamon, kosher salt, flour, and some butter, light brown sugar, sour cream, and vegetable oil, some baking soda, and coffee. Who would have thought? Um, some vanilla extract and some instant espresso, as well as some baking powder, cardamom, and some eggs. If you couldn't already tell, I am overjoyed to be once again testing a recipe from this perfect human. Very much like Rie, I adore Claire. I think she is insanely talented. She's so good on camera. I do miss her old videos a little bit from the channel that still shall not be named, but I just love her. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, uh, uh, let's stay focused. There were a few prep steps I had to do before assembling this cake. Namely, separating the cardamom seeds from their pods and then grinding those up. Mixing together some brown sugar, cinnamon, and coffee granules. That will be our nice little coffee ribbon throughout the middle of this cake. And then whipping up her version of the crumb topping with a lot of similar ingredients to emeralds. But this time with the addition of some salt, some of that ground cardamom, the instant coffee. This one will definitely be making up for the lack of coffee in the last recipe. There's basically multiple forms of coffee in every single component of this. Also, if you are new to these videos where I make and compare a bunch of similar recipes, what I love to do most is compare all the little finer details from the different flours and the types of brown sugars they elect to use. I found it interesting that they both use some sour cream for moisture. And one of the reasons I'm most excited to try this one is because even though we're going to end up with similar volumes of cake batters, she adds more of basically everything that is going to give this cake its flavor, its moisture. There's more butter and eggs in this, there is more sour cream, they add vegetable oil, so this should be pretty damn tasty. Try not to look too closely at this metal 9x5 pan I used. Uh, it's definitely seen better days. It's probably time for a new one. But maybe just as the Detroit-style pizzerias say when they show off their 100-year-old metal pans that they cook in, maybe it'll add some flavor and some character. But this one gets baked at the same temperature and the same time, about 350 for 45 minutes. I was a little bit concerned by the jiggliness in the middle of this, but Claire did say it's supposed to look that way. And I was also scared to overcook this and dry it out, so I just cut myself a piece, and let's just give this guy a shot. Now this one looks like it belongs in a magazine. It's got that perfect stripe running through the middle. I love the height of it all. But again, are coffee cakes just deceptively dry looking? Because I could be wrong, but it's kind of how it looks again. Ooh. Now this could have been me, it could be a tad overbaked, but I'm gonna be honest, it is on the dry side a little bit. There's no question I would need a nice glass of milk or a, a latte on the side of this. It is definitely drying my mouth a little bit. But with that being said, the flavor of the crunch and especially that ribbon is delicious. It's so perfectly balanced. I think I'd be able to tell that this was a Claire recipe if you put it in front of me. You get the uh, the salty and the sweet, the bitter punch in the face of the coffee that I was hoping for. Maybe some kind of glaze like the last one or even like a vanilla milk cake soak would uh, help this out. And again, it could have been user error a little bit, but the last one was lacking coffee. This one's a little bit dry. I've still yet to find the perfect coffee cake. And lastly for today, we've got this straight up stunning looking chocolate coffee cake from M. Patissier, Patissiri. Sorry if I botched that one, um, but for this you will need some sugar and cocoa powder, salt, heavy cream, dark chocolate and butter, lots of eggs, some whole coffee beans, and some milk. Immediately, there are so many aspects of this recipe and video that I love. To start, there is no flour in this recipe. The volume of the cake is gonna rely completely on some whipped egg whites that should theoretically result in a super light and delicate cake. Of course, I love how aesthetic this thing looks. I'm sure I won't be able to nail it as good as they do, but even if it's half as good, I'm sure it'll look extremely satisfying. I think that steeping the whole coffee beans with the heavy cream and then using that to make a chocolate cream filling is genius. The combination of chocolate and coffee is such a match made in heaven. They complement each other so well. And for the sake of full transparency, I love the fact that this video has over seven and a half million views. Absolutely no shame over here. Now, I do realize that the cake in the video is quite thin, but mine came out 
almost paper thin. This is the thinnest cake I've ever created in my life. It was pretty damn sticky too. I was having quite the issue trying to get these in nice even strips. Now, I'm gonna be fully honest here, peeps. The assembly for this one was kind of a bitch. Outside of the cake being paper thin, it was super sticky. This almost makes me think it was underbaked, but it's so thin and it was in that oven for almost 15 minutes. I can't imagine that is a possibility. As a result though, I took some extra measures to try to reduce the stickage of this. From flipping it out onto some greased wax paper, ensuring that every instrument I used and finger that I touched this with had at least a little bit of moisture on it, and being unbelievably meticulous about basically every single step of this, loading on each individual layer. I was not expecting to be under this much stress in this video. In my mind, I was just making some nice coffee cakes. I think over the years, the few victories that I did have with my decorating and plating have kind of plagued me and now I try to perfect everything. But by the end of this thing, I was pretty damn satisfied with everything from the thickness of the layers. Each one was super even, it cut nice and cleanly. I can say I've never witnessed somebody cutting the crust off a cake as if it was a grilled cheese for a little kid. But it did result in some crispy lines, I can't lie there. I finished it off with some shaved chocolate, and that is that. I can't complain too much with this end product, so let's give the third and final recipe a shot. <sighs> As perfect and aesthetic as this looks, I'm not sure how many people would picture this if you asked them to think of a coffee cake. So this is very good. As I mentioned, as expected, it is incredibly light. When you put that first bite in your mouth, it basically dissolves. You barely have to chew the thing. That's my favorite part of desserts of this nature. You can actually eat a slice and not feel like you just swallowed a cinder block. The flavor is very good, though you primarily get just bitterness from both the coffee and the chocolate. Everything else is very muted, you could barely tell it's there, and unfortunately, this does feel more like a chocolate cake that happens to have a little bit of coffee in it. I love the variety though, I'm gonna eat this whole thing and I probably will make this down the road again, so not a failed experiment. All in all, a very successful day. And my money super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision